Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is the one that I am the most passionate about. I get asked constantly how do you get your child to eat well and healthy and be adventurous. So I'm here to share with you. I have at least 10 tips and kind of lifestyle. I wouldn't even call them hacks because they're lifestyle ways on how to get your child to eat healthy, to eat well, to be adventurous and not be picky. I know all too often we associate, you know, toddlers and little kids with being picky eaters and only eating Kraft mac and cheese, but it doesn't have to be that way. I have a lot of tips to share with you guys on how to get your child to be adventurous and have a good relationship with food. Now, this video is doesn't touch on, you know, sensory processing disorders allergies, anything like that. We're talking in this video specifically about the typical toddler picky eater or typical child, you know, kid picky eater situation. So first and foremost, I want to talk grocery shopping. We as adults are responsible for all the food that comes into our household, right? We're responsible for stocking our pantry and our fridge with nutritious foods. So if we don't bring junk food into the house, then our children don't have access to it. That's first and foremost. I think a lot of us adults can understand that too. If you're going on a specific weight loss journey, then bringing junk into the food is not gonna be effective. So bringing in healthy, nutritious foods is the number one step. Also sticking with grocery shopping, I highly suggest and recommend bringing your child grocery shopping with you if you possibly can. Now I know it's not necessarily ideal. It might take longer. It's a little bit of a hassle sometimes, but it, opens the horizon for your child to experience foods and all kinds of different foods and look at the options that they have. So bringing Sydney with me, for example, grocery shopping, I am a single mom, so I kind of have no other options unless I do grocery delivery. But if you can bring your child with you. So she, one day I remember going to look at bananas. She saw the brown, they're brown, but they're red bananas. She saw them. And she's like, mommy, can we try red bananas? And I remember buying them, I mean, they taste the same, but they're different. They're not yellow, they're not green, they look different. Kids sometimes have this um, fear of new foods, like this looks different, this smells weird. I don't know if I wanna try this because this looks really scary to me, but bringing them to the grocery store and having them touch the food, put them in the bag, put them in the grocery cart, and you know, maybe look at the exotic fruit section and what does this one look super cool? I wanna try this, I wanna try a coconut, I wanna try a dragon fruit and have them really like touch and explore and be in control. Kids oftentimes wanna feel in control and if they're in control over picking out certain foods, putting them in the cart, then they're more likely to wanna try them as well. Another key getting your child involved in picking out foods is getting them in the kitchen to help help prepare foods, help cook at such a young age, start as soon as they can hold a spoon and stir with you. You can, you know, help them stir. I love the kitchen helper stool that we have. I can't recommend a stool. You can pull up a chair. I cannot recommend that enough. Get them in the kitchen. They can munch on the peppers. They can munch on the foods. Look at how you're preparing them. How does it smell? How does it change when you're putting the onions in the pan with the butter and they're watching them turn brown and it smells different. If they are watching you prepare foods, if they are helping and they're, you know, putting something in a bowl, they're stirring it with a spoon, they can munch on again, like the peppers and the broccoli and, and whatever else it may be that they can munch on while they're helping you cook. It helps them see how food can change. I wanted to share with you, I recently read a study. Um, I'll have it linked down below the article that I was reading, but in a study of 47 children, so half of the children helped prepare the food and then half of the study, only the adults prepared the food and it was the same exact food. So in that study, kids who helped cook were ate 76% more salad, ate 27% more chicken, and consumed 24.5% more calories than the kids who had nothing to do with the meal preparation. So that just goes to show you what a huge difference it makes when you get the kids into the kitchen preparing their own dinners. Studies always show kids are way more likely to consume more um, vegetables to be more adventurous if they're helping prepare the food. Now sticking with cooking and in the kitchen, I always, 
always recommend allowing your child to have options and be a part of the choosing of the dinner, be a part of choosing of the vegetables. So personally, if I'm making a dinner where I have like a flexible side dish, I'll say, hey Sydney, do you want some green beans or broccoli? Do you want peas or green beans, uh, carrots or green beans? You know, give them that option so that they feel like, hey, they made the decision, they're in control, and they will be more likely to eat said vegetable. You can give them options. You don't have to give them an open book, endless options, because you know they might choose like Kraft mac and cheese and pizza for every dinner of every week. But if you give them a couple of different options, then they feel like they have chosen they're a part of you know that choice another thing i recommend is sitting and eating as a family have formal family dinners as often as possible i know things can get busy and i know it's tempting to have the tv on which i do sometimes sometimes i have my phone at the table like i'm we're totally not a perfect formal family meal family here but it's so important to sit down and have that meal as a family you can open conversation and it helps encourage your children to see you know you have a healthy relationship with food it food doesn't have to just necessarily be like all about oh my goodness i have to clean my plate and eat this broccoli that i don't enjoy it can be about conversation and you know getting involved and in making it more of like a happy healthy nurturing experience versus a forceful you know experience <laughs> it is so healthy on so many different levels to have a family style meal versus having your kids eat a separate meal and you eating, you eating at a separate time i highly recommend that um, we eat dinner fairly early and it's just been an adapted routine that we have um, and it just works for us if you don't want to become a short order chef and make two different meals for dinner one for your kids and one for you then don't start it don't start it. It will be a habit that they have grown accustomed to for no fault of their own. But if you don't want to be making separate meals for your kids, then don't start it. Obviously, allergy aside, and there might be exceptions if you want a specific like super spicy dinner that's not palatable for young children, you know, there are exceptions. But if you don't want to do it on the regular, then don't start it. Um, it's just as simple as that. Do you love food? Yes. What's your favorite vegetable? Uh, corn. You like corn? Mm -hmm. What's your favorite fruit? Um, grapes. Grapes. And oranges. Grapes and oranges? Those are delicious. What do you like about them? <laughs> They're so juicy. That's why I like them. Or do you like juicy? Yeah. Mm, yum. What's your favorite food? Um, um, mac and cheese. Mac and cheese? It's yes. pretty yummy, huh? And broccoli. Broccoli is so good. Yes. Yeah. I noticed there's a crucial time between two and three years old where I feel like a lot of parents are like, they all, I always get comments about how my child was never picky. They ate anything at all. And then when they hit three years old, they became picky and only wanted a specific food or wouldn't eat anything. I hear that often. It's because at that age, they're starting to learn their independence. They're becoming their own human being. They're making their own decisions. Um, quite often and that's exactly when it's very crucial um, to not give in to all of those you know specific meal requests from them as far as you know making like just plain noodles and butter all the time I highly recommend adding variety and spices as soon as possible at a very very young age once the you know the pediatrician okays it as far as like allergies and sensitivities go add seasonings to your foods, add spices. Don't be afraid to add sauces as soon as you possibly can. I know it's very tempting at a young age to keep everything plain and bland and mild, but it's very important to develop their, their palates. They have a very sensitive palate where they have like heightened senses and smells and tastes and textures are very new to them. But the earlier you expose them to all of those different varieties, the more adaptable, the more susceptible they're gonna be to wanting to you know, eat foods with you know, black pepper on them and seasonings and textures and red sauce that are, you know, it's tanging on their tongue. Oftentimes parents associate you know, spitting out food, throwing food when they're really young as them not liking or enjoying foods. It takes 10 to 15 times for a child or a 
person to know if they're going to actually like the food and enjoy the food. So keep offering that broccoli, keep offering peas or whatever it may be. Keep offering that food to um, your child. Children are exploring and development and developing. So throwing and dribbling food out of their mouth and, you know, like putting it in their mouth and then spitting it back out. I remember even at like two and a half years old, I knew it was part of her development when she was a baby, you know, because everything's development when they're babies. I love you. But when they're a little bit older and still doing it, I was, I questioned and I asked the pediatrician and she said, yep, it's all part of development. It doesn't mean she doesn't like the food. She's just learning about textures. What happens when I chew the food? What happens when I dribble it out? How does it feel? What's the texture like? What's the color like? What noise does it make? What's, what's the reaction my mom's going to make when I throw this food against the floor? <laughs> yeah, you know, you used to do that all the time when you were little. Anyway, so it's all part of development. It's all normal. Do not mistake it for them not liking a specific food. It does take, again, 10 to 15 times of you introducing a food for them to figure out if they really like it or not. You can also try different seasonings. Instead of plain broccoli, don't be afraid to add a little salt and pepper. Their nutrition intake, um, you know, their nutrition requirements change as they get older. You can add a little, you know, the seasonings. You can add some lemon juice, a little bit of vinegar. Oh, my child likes broccoli with lemon juice or broccoli with cheese. Maybe I can add, you know, that to their palate. So add some flavors and seasonings. Don't be afraid. Add some dipping sauces to the side if they want broccoli with ranch and they'll eat it that way. Wonderful. Hummus. I always recommend staying fairly neutral. Don't react and make it an event. If your child tries peas for the first time and totally is repulsed by them, don't make it an event. If you are reacting and you are kind of making an event, then they're gonna remember that every single time you offer them peas or they see peas, they are gonna know, I don't like peas. And my mommy even says I don't like peas too. So um, the more neutral that you stay, the better. And also on the other extreme, if you are like praising them, over praising them and making a big deal about it, you know, it might slap you in the face as well. Like the next time they're trying to try a food and they don't like it, you know, they don't, you, just the more neutral that you stay, um, the better because we are letting them figure out for themselves instead of us deciding for them. If that makes any sense at all, I hope it does. Um, so yeah, just keep encouraging them. Have you ever noticed if you're putting foods on your plate it always seems to entice them. They always want what's on mommy's plate, or at least my child does. She always would rather eat what I'm eating, even if it's the same food. It looks better on mommy's plate, so of course she's gonna take a bite. So model good behavior, they're watching you. Is mommy drinking water? Is mommy, you know, what is she drinking? I want that. What is she eating? I want that. So model good behavior, obviously they're gonna, they're gonna be able to know your relationship with food is reflective on their relationship as well. It has a lot to do with environment as well. So little kids have the tiniest little tummies, right? It's about the size of their fist. So if they make a fist, that's how big their little tummies are. So kids, toddlers and little kids are notorious for being grazers and that's okay too. You know, they have small stomachs so their portions are gonna be smaller than ours. So that's why I'm also a big fan of the no clean plate club. You don't have to worry about your child, you know, clearing their plate in order to get enough nutrition and full fullness. Their little tummies are tiny, so they're not going to eat as much as us. Like one portion for them might be one slice of bread or a half a slice of bread when they're younger. So you can make a half a sandwich instead of a whole sandwich. You know what I mean? Um, also, if your child is a notorious snacker, seize the opportunity to have them have almost like a mini meal instead of a snack. So maybe some sugar snap peas, they're nice and crunchy and they're sweet. Have a little hummus on the side or ranch or whatever if they need a little dipping sauce for some flavors and you know a little handful of nuts and a little cut up piece of cheese. So that right there is kind of like a mini meal but it's a snack at the same time because kids love snacking and that's how they get all of their energy throughout their day is just little meals here and there throughout the day. Also, another uh, key thing that I wanna talk about is snacking. So keep an eye on towards meal times. If, there would, if they would rather snack all day than sit down and eat a meal, I know this one would. She loves to snack. I have to really watch and stop snacking at like say 4 p.m. because our meal, our dinner time's around 5, 5.30. And if she's starting to get really hungry around 4.30, we just have an earlier dinner and that's okay too. Just watch the snacking because they will fill up on, you know, 
liquids and um, snacks instead of eating meals. The more they are introduced to sweet foods and to sugary foods, the more their palate is gonna be adapted to that and the more they're gonna want sugar and the more they're gonna want you know, salt or whatever it is. So um, just be mindful of that. The sugar intake can be a lot. So we, in our household, we just stick to water and milk juice is a treat and it's always 100% juice and cut with water and that's once in a while. So that's just personally in my household because sugar is so addicting and the more their palate is exposed to sugar, the more, the more they're going to want the sugary stuff versus the vegetables that are not so sweet. Also, no bribing. I know sometimes it's really tempting um, to say, you know, eat two more bites of broccoli and you can have this or you can do that or you can have a treat or whatever. I know it's really tempting to do, but it makes it not about the food and them enjoying the food. It's more about their reward. And that's not conducive to getting them to actually eat and enjoy foods for its nutritional value and for its taste. All right, you guys, so that's gonna do it for today's video. I hope you learned a little something you got some tips and inspiration don't give up and i hope you start as soon as possible even if your child is a little bit older there's always hope there's always hope <laughs> encourage them to be involved in the process and maybe add some gardening and grocery shopping and cooking and all of that jazz some books that talk about food and nutrition so that they can explore different types types of textures and flavors and don't be afraid to add those seasonings at an early age. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and I will talk to you in the next one. Bye guys. Bye guys.